A couple years ago, something called blackplanet.com sold for, I guess, $38 million. Yeah. So, Does uh, that make you a rich man? It doesn't make me a rich man. I, uh, I, by the time we sold it, it uh, my share of the company was relatively modest, so um, I'm very... Before the social media giants that tower over us today, there was a website that set out to connect people with people, and more specifically targeting the African American community. That website was none other than Black Planet, founded by Dr. Omar Wasso and Benjamin Sun. Dr. Wasso was born on December 22, 1970 in Nairobi, Kenya, to a father of German Jewish descent and his mother being an African American woman. Both of his parents worked in education, his father being an economics professor and mother in early childhood education. Despite his family's strong multi-ethnic roots, they are thoroughbred New Yorkers to the core. Now, when compared to others' experiences of the biracial struggle, Dr. Wasso is not exempt. According to a 1997 article in the Chronicle of Higher Education Online, he speaks on feeling alienated from his own black community as a biracial person when he attended Stanford in the early 90s, and quote, One of the most transformative periods of my life occurred when I was a student at Stanford. When I arrived, I felt totally alienated from the black community on campus. At the time, I was pretty illiterate about race politics as I had come from New York where there was this one world vibe. For all of the power that idea has, it also shelters you from the harder realities. For example, the, the black community on campus was really polarized at the time. It was hard as a freshman to figure out where I fit in. As a result, I stayed on the periphery. But by the time I graduated, I was a resident assistant in the black theme house, one of the minority focused dormitories where those living in it or 50% or 60% of a particular racial group. I went from being marginal to being at the center. I was in a place where every time I felt it, I felt like the rest of the world was not as comfortable or as familiar. It's surprising then that not only did I become savvier about race politics in this country, but I also became more at peace with the world. It might be because the experience gave me real love and respect for black folks and our history. His grandfather was a brilliant mathematician named Wolfgang Wasso. From this, we can see the popular correlation of math and technology from grandfather to grandson. However, it wasn't mathematical genes that would propel Dr. Omar Wasso to be intrigued early into the World Wide Web. Now, that honor belongs to surprisingly video games. According to a 2018 Complex Magazine interview, here's what Dr. Wasso himself had to say about the technological interest. It was very simple. I love playing video games. My grandparents got me a Pong set that you plug into a TV and it's a little dot going back and forth. There was hockey going back and forth on the screen and those games entranced me. And I graduated into other games like Defender and Donkey Kong. I grew up wanting to be a programmer and fell in love with the world of tech. In junior high school, I begged my way out of woodshop into computer science class and it really changed my life. I went to being somebody who consumed video games to creating games. That transformation going from being a consumer to a creator poured over to Black Planet, where it wasn't about us telling people how to use the internet, it was by giving them tools and letting them have the stage and letting them be in the spotlight. In 1996, Benjamin Sun co-founded Community Connect, an early multi-network social umbrella that hosted several ethnic social sites such as Mehente.com and AsianAvenue.com which grew in extreme popularity. Sun raised upwards to $20 million from investors to push the publisher as much as possible. Around the same year, Dr. Omar Wasso managed NewYorkOnline.com, a media consultation web service provider and pre-web community he had started in his Brooklyn living room in 1993. New York Online was multicultural focused, but it succeeded in only having 1,000 users. The site eventually was left in the dust by rising web technologies. Like many other entrepreneurs whose native products may not pay the bills, Dr. Wasso had to offer a service by outsourcing his skills. The company survived by building websites for magazines such as Vibe, Essence, and Latino. It was at a meeting with one of his clients that Sun and Dr. Wasso met. Dr. Wasso saw how Benjamin Sun grew AsianAvenue.net thinking it to be a no-brainer connecting with him to build an online ecosystem niche to African-Americans. 
This partnership would birth Black Planet in 1999, a site that would set the bar in tone for future social sites to follow. There had already existed three websites backed by major media conglomerates such as AOL, targeting African Americans around the time of Black Planet's conception. Fortunately, this didn't discourage Dr. Wasso from pushing onward to build what is now historically known as the Black community's first official social networking website. Black Planet's beginnings were founded on the premise of online dating, but soon became multifaceted, offering many different aspects of the online social experience, from general forums, message and job boards, and more. The technology, as Dr. Wasso puts, it is based on proprietary, homegrown software, possibly using HTML tables, PHP, Early Flash, and JavaScript to build this infrastructure. Dr. Wasso does not explicitly reveal the source code that Black Planet is built on, was built on. Regardless, Black Planet never really experienced any major security pitfalls, such as MySpace's infamous hacking event. It seems resilience has always been in Black Planet's DNA. It successfully weathered the dot-com bubble burst back in early 2000, still becoming the most highly trafficked site by 2002. Black Planet would evolve to serve the demand of different walks of life from the black community. It cleverly offered both business and pleasure where people work and or play through its many web 2.0 components. Members would read other members' blogs, watch music videos, chat with one another, flirt, look for new careers, and discuss the news. However, in order for members to do this, they had to, of course, have an account submitting basic personal information. This information was then algorithmically used to align users with other users, job preferences, etc. based on regions and zip codes. Other things such as relationship status match those similar relationship goals in a dating feature. Social functionality such as these serves Black Planet's ultimate purpose, to create a community bringing African Americans together as well as non-blacks interested in connecting within its social grid. BP's accomplishments can be taken one step further beyond community building as it created opportunities for people in need of new careers and relationships. This was the power of Black Planet's community that it had produced. From 1999 to 2008, Black Planet grew upwards to 18 million monthly users. The site was an early pioneer of online social interaction despite its absence today when Facebook, MySpace, or even Friendster are mentioned. Dr. Wasso would enjoy unique media coverage being identified by People Magazine as the sexiest internet executive in their November 13, 2000 issue. He wrote the wave of his popularity continuing to make appearances on the Today Show and teaching Oprah how to use the internet as she claimed to be technologically illiterate. This popularity would serve to help Dr. Wasso bridge deals to the website, bringing it out the red of its revenue growth. Black Planet's first few years were not profitable, but by 2004, the website had generated revenue, becoming one of the few companies to achieve what was considered a rare feat during that time. And remember, this was during the downturn of the dot-com bubble, which scared off web advertisers. As a matter of fact, Dr. Wasso boasted to the New York Times that they expected revenue to increase 80%, that's more than $12 million, thanks to the ad investments from larger corporations such as Hewlett Packard and Microsoft, who absorbed exclusive and ad space on the site's higher profile areas. While the company employed around 15 people who focused on the technical aspects and daily operations, Dr. Wasso directed his attention on bringing in more sponsorship deals and cultivating ideas that would take the company to new heights. So needless to say, Dr. Wasso's attention was focused from instead of working in the business, he was working on the business. An example was a sponsorship with BooksOnline.com, an agreement to sponsor the book section of the Black Planet website. This deal involved Books Online to host Arthur interviews in African-American-themed literature. Despite these deals, Dr. Wasso was hesitant to completely rely on advertisers. With the recurring subscription business model being dominant today, this was not unfamiliar ground for the site. Black Planet would invest heavy on its dating component, offering a $19.99 monthly service fee for members to view information hidden behind this paywall. This allowed people to see who their crushes were, reveal the identity of those messaging them, and more. Many have met their future spouses on this site as Wasso jokes. Where else is a 50-year-old black woman going to meet her husband? 
Black Planet was described as being alive, full of hustle and bustle, thanks to emphasizing its goal to connect people to people and not just people to information as other websites heavily focused on during that time. It was this sort of stickiness that allowed Black Planet to experience its phenomenal growth in its prime years. In keeping up with the times, Black Planet experimented with different features and upgrades over the years. Unfortunately, these features lacked the technical innovation and infrastructure that was found in MySpace and Facebook. According to a 2009 blog post from Black Web 2.0, Black Planet released new features such as status updates, mobile applications, and chat features, but came off primitive in the name of just being different. For example, the technology used for the chat capabilities was powered through a company called Chat Blazer, which was built on Flash. This was a bad move as technology was entering the dawn of smartphones and the death of Flash thanks to Steve Jobs' witch hunt against the technology. Black Planet largely dropped the ball as they created these new features to keep up with the tech that they once influenced, but on the not so smart mobile devices. That is, flip phones, singular wireless bricks, Nokia Motorola screens, etc. Since Black Planet's target demographic was, well, was Afrocentric, one tech review blogger on Black Web 2.0 may have the answer as to why they did this. Well, you know, because black people don't use smartphones, and this was 2008 at the time. The push for innovation faltered for mobile with clunky user interfaces and lack of smartphone support. The pinnacle of Black Planet is when presidential candidate Barack Obama and his clever use of social media signed up for a Black Planet account, acquiring more followers on there than MySpace and Facebook combined. Alas, by the time this happened, Facebook and MySpace were becoming the apex of social media websites. In a Medium article titled An Ode to Black Planet, Malud Sadiq brilliantly sums up the state of affairs and quote, Unfortunately, by then, Facebook was on the rise and Wasso had other interests. Tech and entrepreneurship were only a few of Wasso's concerns and neither of them addressed the issues that were most important to him. The intersection of race and politics and the role of education. Not to mention, Wasso was aware that in order to compete, Black Planet would have a needed a complete overhaul and a pivot to mobile. He left the company, however, and went back to school. Attention was misguidedly placed in creating black versions of popular titles such as Facebook's Farmville into what I think is a weaker version titled Farmandia. This approach of copying as innovation would cripple Black Planet in the years to come as the granddaddy of social sites that inspired and influenced the whole Web 2.0 generation would be technologically surpassed by Facebook, MySpace, and more. The race to, at minimum, keep up with the likes of Mark and Tom's native features soon became an exhaustive one. Dr. Wasso's interest pursuing technological entrepreneurship eventually began to wane as he redirected his attention on the things that mattered to him the most. Education, racial intersectionality, and the African-American plight. Entering this transitional time, we have Black Planet being sold to Radio 1 for $38 million in 2008, signaling the end of an era. Black Planet in 2020? Well, it's not as inactive as many would like to think that it is. To say that Black Planet is a mere shadow of its former self would probably be true, but disrespectful. What, what it has done is intelligently niche down, still serving a small group of African-American community aware of its existence, even today. Unlike Facebook, where you can't see anyone's post unless you have an account, Black Planet today is the complete opposite. You can currently visit the site and see that its new presentation aims at a public wall where voices can be seen or heard void of needing any account. There were attempts in early 2012 to cultivate a charitable cause on the website. For instance, Black Planet Rising was proposed to encourage community support and services by its members. It worked with a charitable organization called Donors Choose, which connected users to offer donations in either monetary time or material resources. Black Planet Rising's giving page via Donors Choose reached $11,023 by 36 donors. More notable things such as this were all nonprofit based during the site's latter years. To this day, in 2021 as we speak, Radio One still owns the intellectual rights to Black Planet through their acquisition of Community Connect. And you can go on their website to check it out for yourself.